Humiliate me? Hit me? Fight my brother? 900 plus honeybees helped me break up with you. So, here's the necessary background. I come from a family of sideline beekeepers, so I've been around bees my whole life. I have no problem being around creepy crawlies, and bees tend to be comforting in some way for me. It isn't like a pet though, more like a distraction from the real life? Anyways, I'm weird and I like bees more than people. My dad is a sideline apiarist, so selling honey and queen bees is his side business. His main job is an architect. I started dating a junior athlete in high school two years ago. He was everything I wanted when I was going through my teen fantasy phase. Tall, blonde, smelled great, and he was an absolute delight to be around. For the sake of the story, we'll call him Harris. Harris was a bit of a troubled kid. I knew his parents put pressure on him, but that often lead to outbursts at others. Since I, his lovely bee-obsessed girlfriend, was there at all times, I was the easiest to lash out at. Now, I'm not a short girl by any means, but Harris, like I said, was tall. At the time, I hated to admit that I was truly afraid whenever he decided to pick on me. But these events were so far and few that I ignored them, because you know, he was amazing. We had some of the best times, and he was the first, and only, guy I've ever had sex with. I'll spare you the details, but I thought it was going to be a secret between me and him. My honeymoon with him died a year later, when he invited me to senior prom. I was a sophomore at the time, so I was super stoked to go. I picked out a dress and everything, feeling on top of everything. I was a bit on the heavy side back then, but not to the point it was noticeable, unless I took off my clothes. Still, dress. Something that isn't pants. I was excited. Who cares about arm fat? Well, apparently all of Harris's friends do. I almost forgot that these guys and girls were athletes, and I was not. As soon as I caught up with them, I found that they were in a total joking mood. Great, I loved jokes. So, OP, Harris really loves you, said one of his friends. I know, I could act smug. I grinned. Yeah, I replied, and I love him too. Cue a kissing interlude here. His friend rolled her eyes, said something about me being weirdly cute. Cue a kissing interlude here. His friend rolled her eyes, said something about me being weirdly cute. Harris grinned, took a break from me to talk. Oh, really? Cute? Like what? A baby hippo. She probably meant this in jest, but I thought it was unusual. Maybe I was self-conscious or something and thought it was a fat joke. I didn't laugh and I could feel my face go hot. I'd picked up a Coke earlier, and I was pretty sure it was heating up in my palms. True, Harris said in his ever so suave voice as he wrapped his arm around me. His hand traveled down the side of my dress, and he squeezed my stomach. OP is my baby hippo, and I saw all of it. All of it? Excuse me, you mean all of her. And I'm right here, regretting to have ever come here. All of it? Excuse me, you mean all of her. And I'm right here, regretting to have ever come here. Insert more laughter here. Then their conversation took off. And I mean it went from zero to one hundred really quick. He spilled the honey and told his friends, all five people here, about how me and him did the sexy business. He said some off-putting comments about my body and the parts he wanted to touch. I was trying my damn hardest not to cry since this could have just been a harmless joke on their part. Needless to say, I wasn't having any of it, so I excused myself. Not to the bathroom, but home. I called my dad to pick me up, and not to let Harris's dad know. I wasn't in the area during spring break. My dad flew me and my brother, a year younger, 15 at the time, out to Pennsylvania for vacation. We went to the Hershey's Chocolate Factory and all, and I had a chance to clear my head. As far as I can remember, this was the last time my dad was actually pleased with me. When we returned in 10 days, Harris popped in a visit at a time he knew my dad wouldn't be home. My brother was, as he usually was, playing Minecraft on his PC in his room. I thought Harris visited to apologize for the whole baby hippo thing, but I was grossly mistaken. He punched me, in the gut. I'd never been punched before up until now, and it was truly horrible. Not only did it hurt like hell, but it damn near made me puke and knocked the wind out of me at the same time. He grabbed me by the shoulders and shouted at me. He said that I shouldn't have left on prom, how I shouldn't have embarrassed him in front of his friends, and that I should have called him when I was in Pennsylvania. 
My brother came running down the stairs when he heard the commotion. I had this urge to bend over and stay bent over, so I couldn't really focus on him. All I knew is that he went after Harris, cursing, shouting, and crying. I ran the other way the best I could, trying to breathe first and foremost. It was hard to do anything or think straight with this horrible taste in my mouth and nasal cavity. Like I'd thrown up inside my nose or something. It was gross, and it certainly pissed me off. Going for my phone was difficult, since Harris had already found his way away from my brother, begging me not to call the cops. I almost got the landline too, but Harris snatched it from my hand. He broke the cover, took out the batteries, and then proceeded to beg again. This time, he didn't touch me, and I told him to get the hell out. I cleaned up the house so my dad wouldn't see any of this. This was going to be my first and last fight with Harris, or so I hoped. At least he didn't check the landline. My brother was more injured, and certainly devastated. He couldn't even ask if I was okay, and I took it as he knew I wasn't, and only proceeded to cry. He really looked up to Harris. Let's go five hours ahead, 10 p.m., and I'm still seething. We found out my brother had sprained his wrist, so we rigged up some sort of easy-to-remove ice thing. My dad was a hard man, so I knew he would get upset at first when he saw the mess we'd gotten into. I can't remember what my intention was, whether I was going to tell him about Harris or not. I knew that he would be back the day after, so I had to exact my revenge right now. I shut the doors, windows, and waited for my brother to go to sleep. Now came the tidy bits. I shimmied into the other set of beekeeper clothes, the ones my mom wore when she was around to check on the apiary. I got the veil, the gloves, the boots, you know. Gotta be prepared. That night was particularly cold, and it felt very unreal. I was unpacking thousands of honeybees, moving them around until I got the right number of frames, all under my dad's nose. And I was going to release them on a living human being. We had roughly 30,000 bees per beehive, and around 150 hives. Like I said, it was a side business, and we needed honey. I knew at the time that a thousand or so bee stings could kill, and I wasn't planning on going to jail. I was just going to make this hurt like hell. I isolated a fair number of bees between two frames with a bit of difficulty. There were maybe 900, 950. Not all of them would sting him, but I wanted to get him back for everything. Who punches their baby hippo, right? Once I had my bees in place, I set the single frame in its own hive closer to home. I called him and told him that I wanted to work some things out with him. No violence, none of that stuff. I lied through my teeth, telling him I won't tell my dad and that I was doing all right. He showed up five minutes later and stepped up to my door. The porch light was the only thing illuminating him, and the rest of the place was dark. I removed the frames from the hive. I walked up behind him, beekeeper boots squeaking on the steps, frame in my hand. Hi, Harris, I said. I thought it would sound cool, but I was crying. My voice broke. Voice breaking was the least of Harris's problems at the moment anyway. I was holding two open frame with almost a thousand bees. Some of them were flying around, but I was fully protected. Harris? Not so much. I swatted him with one frame and thrusted the other one against his mouth, hoping I could get at least a single bee between his lips. A single bee sting hurts like hell, and will hurt for a while. But the thing about bees is that they are a part of a true hive mind. A single bee dies, and all bees in the area go into defensive mode stinging at whatever flesh, and deter whatever attacker they can find in order to protect the hive. The frame I hit Harris with likely killed a few. The resulting scream was insane. I'd never heard him scream before. I almost expected the bees to fly away and hide in some other hive, but no. When bees defend, they really defend. It didn't help that Harris wore short sleeves and had his neck and face exposed, so the bees went for that. Fortunately for him, none of the bees went inside his mouth like I intended. They weren't stupid and wouldn't do that. Instead, they just kept stinging him. I ended up falling down the stairs and scrambling into the dark, looking to get away from him. Looking back though, he was in no position to fight and I shouldn't have ran. But I did, and I got to watch him try to fight his way through the cloud of bees. I think he learned that killing one bee won't scare the swarm, 